Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're checking out what might be the best small form factor webcam I've used so far from the folks at YOLO Live. This is the YOLO Cam S3. Now this kind of separates itself from a lot of other webcams, which usually look a little bit grainy because it gives you a larger sensor. That's right, it's much larger than a standard webcam, giving you excellent image quality. So this is how it looks. I'm using it on this shot right here, and I'm very impressed with the kind of image quality I can get out of it here in the studio. Now I'm shooting the main or primary shot here with my Micro Four Thirds camera. This is the Lumix G9 Mark II with a very expensive lens, and this, is the webcam and as you can see even though it might look a little messy back here or a little weird or bland you don't normally see the shot in the room the image quality is excellent we're going to talk you through what makes this webcam different from the other options we'll test it up against one of my other favorites and then i'll walk you through the software and everything that you need to know before we get into it, a massive thanks to the folks from YOLO Life for sending this out. If you want to take a look at it, I'll link it down below. At the time of producing this video, it comes in at $200, which I think is really reasonable considering the kind of image quality you can get out of this and you can be the judge. Let's get into it. It's worth starting by talking about who this webcam is for. So if you're a gamer, live streamer or podcaster looking for a very simple setup where you can plug a camera that looks this good into a computer, then you're gonna get a kick out of this. It really does simplify the entire setup. A little while back, I reviewed the YOLO Cam S7, which is a micro four thirds sensor webcam. And this requires more expensive lenses. And while the image quality is really something else on that, this is the next best thing without having interchangeable lenses. So if you like the image quality with this here in the studio, you'll get a kick out of this. The second reason why this is so powerful is it gives you 4K at 30p maximum resolution. And thanks to that larger sensor, it actually looks pretty glorious. But the cool thing with this is, especially if you're a gamer or podcast, you might be wanting to stream, say, at 1080p at 60 frames per second. You've now got yourself a digital crop where you can punch in thanks to the software. And I'll show you that in just a moment. The sensor built into the S3 is a one over 1.3 inch sensor. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, what I'll do, I'll show you a diagram between a typical webcam sensor and the size of this one. So you get a good appreciation of just how much larger this is. Thirdly, we get phase detection, autofocus, and three unique modes. I'll get into those in just a moment, but this is autofocus continuous. So as I hold this up, it's going to switch to the box. You can see that it's nice and in focus and the background is nice and blurry. As I move it away, it's going to snap back to my face. So this is how the autofocus system works on this webcam. Let me cover quickly what's in the box and then we'll get stuck into the functionality of the software. Included, we get the Cam S3. And as you can see, it's nice and small. It's built well. It feels really good in the hand. The magnetic mount that comes with this is fantastic. It allows you to use it on any sort of external monitor or laptop thanks to its smart design. The camera itself just magnetizes to the top so you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to fall off if you hold it upside down or anything like that. The magnets are great. Thirdly, we get a USB-C to USB-A cable with a little dongle attachment that changes that A type to a C type. So if you're only rocking USB-C, this little plug will have you covered. YOLO Live were nice enough to send me this little desktop stand here as well. So if you don't want to have it clipped onto a monitor for any reason you can run it like this and this is probably an additional purchase if it is i'll leave the price on screen here but you can still tilt it in any way that you like if i want to change the angle or move it around it's nice and easy to do so but it's very sturdy, so I wouldn't have any problems recommending this in terms of build quality. While a webcam doesn't offer the same sort of recording capabilities as, say, a professional camera or any camera that also offers webcam functionality, if you plan on using a camera like the Sony ZV-E1 as a webcam, you get about 45 minutes before it just shuts down and overheats. This is designed to run for 24-7, <laughs> which is great. So if you're doing any long podcast or gaming playthrough or whatever, and it might take you six, seven, ten hours, whatever, this will just work. It kind of sets your mind at ease. If you've ever streamed with one of these before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The YOLO Live S3 has some companion software called YOLO Live Compose, which allows you to mix up all the different settings and change different parameters or just leave everything set to automatic. And I'll run you through that right now. So as you can see on screen, I've currently got the format of the video set to 16 by 9, but if I'm doing any sort of vertical streaming, I can switch it to 9 by 16. That's pretty wild. One click. I like it. Now with the frame rate option here, this is how many frames per second that you'll be outputting. So I've got it set to 50 hertz, which is 50 frames per second, being that I'm in a PAL region, or 25 if I want to have the sort of like standard frame rate. Now if you're 
just doing a live stream on YouTube, you probably want to set it to either 30 frames per second or 60. Same with Twitch. If you're a gamer, set it to 60 hertz. It will just look really nice. Under image settings, we get sharpness, which changes how sharp and detailed the image is. If you like me and you prefer a softer image, you can back this off a little bit. The contrast will go all the way down from zero contrast all the way up to 100, but around 50% looks best. So just experiment around. If you need the image to pop a little more in terms of contrast, just nudge it up ahead. You don't have to push this too far. If you prefer more of a cine look, you can kind of back it off the other way. But start with it at 50% and see how you go. The saturation will control how deep the colors are. So I can pull it all the way back and get a black and white image. We'll go the <laughs> extreme the other way and it looks like I've got makeup on, which I don't. <laughs> so I can put this back at 50% and I'm good to go. Now lens shading correction is an interesting thing. So I've had this on the entire time because I prefer how it makes the studio look. But if I turn it off, the background now looks more accurate to my eye. So experiment around with this control and see what you prefer to be the best for your situation. What I've noticed is it doesn't really change my skin tone. If I turn it back on, it looks basically the same. If I turn it off, it looks basically the same. I don't know. I can't tell much of a difference, but it's definitely doing something to the entire scene as a whole. So yeah, if you get this camera, experiment around with that for your studio. When it comes to autofocus, we've got three different modes. Autofocus single, autofocus continuous, and face detection. So I've had it on autofocus single shot. And the reason why is it stops it from hunting. I'm not moving position. I might just move around like this, but everything's still gonna be in focus on my face. Even if I move forward a bit, I'm still gonna be mostly in focus. Now this autofocus continuous mode, and you can put this box anywhere on screen by using this software, by the way, but I'm gonna put it over my head. So if I move back, it should focus on me. And if I move forward, it's gonna focus on me. If I hold something up, it's gonna focus on that. As I bring it back down, it's gonna snap back to my face. But I've found this occasionally will just sort of move around when I don't want it to. So for me, in a static position, autofocus single is the way to go. Again, if you're gonna be doing some sort of product thing where you're gonna be holding things up in front of your face, then you'll wanna set it to autofocus continuous because then it will actually respond. And it works relatively well. For a webcam, it works really well. Face detection, basically will AI track my face like this. So yeah, this is another option you can choose if you want. But again, I think the most reliable one here is autofocus single shot for static subjects like myself. As I mentioned earlier, this webcam is a 4K 30p webcam at its maximum resolution, but we also get some really cool zoom features here. So at its widest, it says it's 50 millimeters and at its tightest, it's 98. Check out that beard. Woo. <laughs> so yeah, you can go anywhere in between. You can set up some hotkeys here as well if you just wanna be able to punch in for you know a particular shot that you're doing in the studio. So that's really cool. The exposure settings are nice and simple here. We've got either auto or manual settings. As you can see, the anti-flicker rate is the refresh rate of the lights. And again, I'm in Australia, so I've got it set to 50 Hertz. If you're in North America, set it to 60 Hertz. And if you're not sure, just set it to close and it will work automatically for you. There's also uh, EV, which is basically like exposure compensation here. If I bring this up, you'll see the image get brighter. And as I bring it down, it will go back to normal. One of the things that's really impressed me with this new camera is the fact that the white balance works as well as it does. I'm in a relatively challenging situation. So I've got a couple of studio lights here. I've got a big blue LED behind me and this is auto white balance. And I think it holds up pretty favorably to my G9 Mark II over here. And I've set, set that manually, whereas this one has been just set to auto and it's doing a really great job. If you wanna change the hue or the blue and red offset, you can as well. You can move this around and you'll see it move within the box. I'm just gonna leave it where it is right now. The audio settings here, if you're using a microphone plugged into the computer or an onboard microphone, you can select your noise reduction. If you're using an external microphone, you'll set that up within open broadcaster software or your streaming platform software of choice and you can make the adjustments there and you won't need to worry about any of this. On this settings tab over here, we've got something called live scene. If you're just getting started with this, the best way to kind of calibrate everything is just to tap on standard. It will do its thing and it will set up the best settings for the particular situation. And again, you can move the autofocus box wherever you like and then go back into here. You can see that it's adjusted a few things, just looking at the settings from before and then you can go ahead and change things. If you just wanna use AFS, you can move this wherever you like and you're in business. So yeah, it's very powerful software. 
There's only one thing that I don't like about this software and it forces you to have an account to save a scene. So say for example, I've got everything set up the way that I want and I go to save scene. It requires me to log in, which I don't love. This needs to go. Not everyone wants to have their information across every website in the world. That will annoy some people and it won't annoy others. But I'm one of those guys where it's starting to get a little bit annoying to have to sign into everything. So this should just be a feature in the software. If you've got a dedicated streaming setup, you should be at least allowed to save it if you're saving it within the software that's required for the camera. So yeah, let us know what you think about that in the comment section. That's basically my only critique. Let's do a quick image quality and field of view comparison between the Yolo Cam S3 here and the Elgato Face Cam Pro, which is a separate 4K webcam. So I've got them both hooked up right now. You can see that by looking at the Yolo Cam S3, I'm getting nice subject separation from the background. And thanks to the larger sensor, it allows for this. Whereas if I switch over to the Elgato, while the color science looks okay here, it looks very webcam-y, right? So there's a huge difference between this 4K webcam giving me very little background blur, unless I basically are right up against the, you know, the camera versus being in the, exactly the same position here, getting this kind of image quality. So this is why this will be my go-to webcam. It absolutely wipes the floor with the others that I've tested so far. And you can be the judge. So that's the Elgato. Again, it's a great webcam. And if you want more in focus, this is the way to go. But I think the image quality and color science on this just looks beautiful. And having a more professional look, especially in the studio, if you want to up your production for live streaming, it's a great choice. All right, let's wrap this up. I'm going to give you my final thoughts here on the Yellow Cam S3. This is the first webcam that actually feels like it bridges the gap between your conventional webcam and the look associated with it, which is sharp. There's no background blur and it suffers in low light to a more professional mirrorless camera like a micro four thirds camera that gives you a larger sensor. This one over 1.3 inch sensor in here is awesome. It gives you a much more premium look than any other webcam I've used. It allows you to get better background blur, subject separation, low light performance, all that kind of thing. And the color science was really nice on this also. Now, anytime I'm live streaming, I usually go through the painful process of setting up my mirrorless cameras, setting up a switcher, a computer, all that kind of stuff just to get live streaming and I'm sick of it. <laughs> I just want a simple solution. And this is a simple solution for folks who are still looking for really nice image quality. Is this as good as the Sony ZV-E1 in terms of image quality? No, but it's also far less expensive. It's not going to overheat and it will give you a really great look for live streaming or broadcast applications. And it just is a really great form factor as well. Look how small this is. This can just sit on top of my desktop computer in my other room and that's it. Anytime I need to go live, I can plug it in and I'm good to go. The only ding about this is the software. I really don't like the fact you have to sign in and create an account just to save your favorite settings. It's a bit of a kick in the guts if you do buy this. Everything should just work with the software. You shouldn't be forced into signing in to use it. I'm not a big fan of that. You can let me know in the comments what you think of that. But as a plug and play device here that allows you to stream either 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 just by flipping it over with the magnetic system here. It really does tick a lot of boxes and I'm a big fan of what they were able to do here. Thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. I will catch you on the next one. See ya.